Okay, well, it's that time. Going to be installing the Braille lithium ion battery into the 488. So, if you've uh, seen the other videos on my channel, you may remember this little guy. I purchased it uh, some time ago to use in the 458 Italia. This is the Braille um, I48CS. Uh, they also have an I48CX, uh, which is half the weight and half the capacity of this. A lot of people like that battery because it is, is only 10 pounds, which saves you a lot of weight over, uh, you know, we all know how heavy a car battery is. Uh, this particular one is, I believe it's 19 and a half, 20 pounds. So uh, I went with this particular one, even though it's 10 pounds heavier because it's twice the capacity of the um, i 48 CX, therefore uh, approximately twice the standby time. So if you're not familiar with Ferraris firsthand, uh, they kind of have a nasty little habit and that is they, if you don't drive the car for more than uh, a few days, I think the manual says 72 hours uh, or more and you should plug it in. Uh, there's a little plug on the back on the 488 which allows you to hook up the the battery tender. So if you're not driving your car, you're busy working or something like that, you, you pretty much have to have the tender on. Otherwise, when you go to drive the car, uh, generally speaking, it won't start or it will uh, start, but it will issue a um, electrical system failure, which can be kind of uh, a little touchy with some of the systems in the car. Anyways, so the this battery's not only is it lightweight, it's, it's phenomenal. It's a lithium ion battery. Uh, first thing everybody says is, oh my God, lithium ion, you know, battery is gonna catch the car on fire. Not exactly the same technology as your cell phone. Uh, if you research the lithium cells and the different compounds, and I'll put a link to this particular battery in the description section of the video, but um, it's, it uses, a, my understanding from the company is that it uses a different style uh, cell which is uh, geared more towards cars and of course any battery there's you know dangers even a normal car battery but this one is designed for automotive use they use it in um, you know everything from drag racing to off-road racing to formula one i think even uses it so uh, after i did all my research this was the battery of choice uh, it is very expensive i think this one is two three thousand dollars uh, plus the battery tender, uh, which you can't use the normal battery tender on the Ferrari anymore. You have to use uh, a battery tender specifically designed for the lithium cells. So before you rush out and uh, purchase a battery, a lithium battery, whether it's Braille or any other company, uh, you should really do your research. Uh, I spent several months researching all this before I stuck it into the Ferrari. However, I used it on the 458 Italia with just absolutely great success. Uh, never once had to use the battery tender, which is really great. Um, I think I left the car sitting three weeks or a month one time, and, and the thing just fired right up. So anyways, let's get down to business here. I'm going to take the car cover off the 488, and we'll see what's uh, required to get this little guy installed. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Uh, I'm working in the garage today because it's pretty hot outside, but let's get, let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. So on the battery, it's right, put my flashlight up there. So there's a, a little knob right here that you unscrew. On the older cars, they give you a real nice kill switch under the hood for like the 355 Berlinettas and the 360 Modernas on the 458 Italia and the and the 488. They've kind of switched over. You can see to this deal here. So this get up. So this is what you get with the Ferrari. Um, they have a they have the positive side over here. It's a little module kind of affair, and then they have the negative side on the. 488 it looks like they've kind of added something um so let me see if i can disconnect the battery here so the way this works is you just pop this down and then it looks like 
I can't quite see here. Looks like they've got an, an additional ground strap here that runs up to the car. On my other car, I took all this stuff off, but let me, um, yeah, so that looks like a secondary. Looks like there's two grounds, but this should just pull off. Here, let, me, let me see what I can do here. Although it looks like there's a, looks like there's a second bracket here. All right, let me take a little closer look at this and we'll be right back. Okay, so I had to kind of put my glasses on, look a little closer. So it looks like what they've done is they've run something here up from the negative post down and then kind of given you a junction point for the little switch, which is this used to on the 458 to tell you this was up here. So it kind of threw me, but so you can kind of see. So all I did was pop this open to release the tension. And then I just wiggled it and, and got it off. So haven't nothing. This looks like it's connected to the battery bracket. So I'm not going to mess with this part right until I get the whole battery out. So this part's out of the mix, and so that disconnects the car power. Okay, so I'm going to start with these bolts back here. These are uh, 10 millimeter. Got my little gear wrench here. And I don't know what Ferrari is up to here with this crazy setup here, but I'll say this, the the design this is somebody somebody in the design department must have been working extra late and taking LSD or something because this this I, I don't know what is going on here with this battery setup, but I'll tell you this much. The layout of the 458 Italia was a lot more straightforward. So, okay, I grabbed a little 10 millimeter on the swivel here. So I don't know, as I was saying, I don't know what Ferrari is thinking here with this, but I guess, you know, when you're like working late in the Ferrari factory and, you know, you've been tripping on mushrooms all night long, and you're sitting in front of a big, beautiful CAD system and, Marco says, hey, I think we, tonight we designed the battery. Yes, okay, it's a good idea. I think we need to hold the battery very securely, yes. So then you get one of this crazy, crazy setups like this. Okay, so. Okay, we still have not managed to free this up. We have, however, done nothing over there. Um, okay, so what, 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 what is the purpose of this big thing? I feel like this has an abs oh, this is, yeah, this, I guess this is so you can't kick into this panel with your foot, which hopefully nobody is doing that. Um, Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, so two 10 millimeters there and nothing. A little bit. So this is the bracket here, which is holding the bottom lip of the battery. Okay, let me try this one here. And I don't know if you can see, but there's yellow. There's yellow marking across this so that Ferrari will know if you've been monkeying around in here. But. I got something for them. I got the same yellow pin. <laughs> and the way I got the pin, actually, I was watching a video on Tesla and how they make their motors. And in the video, I think it was on how it's made or Tesla or something like that, they showed the little guy marking the screw with the paint marker. And I thought, oh, I need that. That's the thing I need right there. And I freeze framed it and I was able to zoom in and see the company who makes the pin. So then I went on Amazon and got a bunch of them. I got blue and yellow. So if I ever need to cover up my work as far as, far as Ferrari or Tesla is concerned, I'm fully equipped to do that. And I will be happy to share that link with all my subscribers. I'm not endorsing marking up these bolts with yellow stripes, but 
should you want to restore the original factory markings. I will give you the links to the products you need. Okay, what do we got here? This makes no sense whatsoever. All right, so, like I said, I don't know what is going on here. And I don't really feel like standing on my head to see. Okay, so this is the upper mount. This is the lower mount. Okay, I gotta go get a flashlight and look around here a little bit more. We'll be right back. Okay, so you see this thing here. I pulled it up out of the way to get access to that. Put my little Big Larry back in. I think Big Larry's running out of juice here. Okay, let me see if I can get access to this 10 millimeter back here. And let me tell you, there's nothing like doing work on a Ferrari with having a full production studio for YouTube sitting in right in front of you. So, hope you guys appreciate this while I'm taking a bullet for you guys, man. All right, let me see if I can get this out of here. Okay. Oh, okay. Now I'm hearing stuff dropping out of the way. Okay, so... Alright, so it looks like we got four... Uh, there we go. Okay, now we're making some progress. Okay, four 10 millimeter bolts. And whatever... Okay. You wouldn't think this was on a Ferrari, but sure enough. Alright. So this, we're going to call this the big triangle thing. It is now out of the way. I guess it's just a footrest basically is kind of the deal so you know that's where you can stick your feet if you have extra long feet they don't want you smashing this they don't want you to smash this panel into your battery I guess so that's probably what it is probably at some point in the 458 Italia somebody smashed their feet right into the battery and they said hey you need a huge panel there so this may or may not go back on my car I don't know but four 10 millimeter bolts and and it's out and then you just kind of slip this thing out of the way okay let me investigate further okay we're back. I ran into my office, got a fresh set of batteries for Big Larry. So we got some light on the subject here. Set up here. Okay, so looks like we're getting down to the meat of the situation here now. I have a bad feeling there's gonna be a bolt around the corner there. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay, that's not good. All right, so. I think there's one of these tucked back in under here. Yeah, that's not going to be fun. All right, let me start. Might be able to just get only this side over here off. And unless my eyes deceive me. We have a copper bolt, I mean a copper nut, which you can tell me why there is a copper nut. Now, if this were an exhaust manifold nut, I would say copper probably is the way to go, but for holding your battery, All right, let me let me go get a socket here. Hang on, save my big Larry battery here, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Okay, I got a deep ten millimeter socket. Let me see if I can get this guy off here. This almost feels like a. I think it is. It feels like a copper pinch nut which is, a lot of times you use those on studs for exhaust manifolds. Uh, built a couple turbocharged systems where I went real first class on everything and I, I used stainless steel studs and copper pinch nuts. But, 
seems like okay, so it seems like a bit of an overkill to me, but you know. Who am I to say? Alright, let me see if I can get this off here. Alright, the more I dig into this, the more I have a bad feeling I'm going to have to pull some of the body panels off. Alright, let's see what we got here. I'll be a son of a bitch. Excuse my Italian. That is a copper pinch nut, I think. Okay, why a nylock nut would not do there, I'll never know. Okay. Um, oh, okay, this is good. It looks like this might this might be good or this might be bad. Uh, okay, so it looks like the hook came out of the back there, so that might be bad. And of course, another copper nut. Okay, so um, let's see here if we can find any movement. All right, it's looking pretty good. But, okay. All right, looks like we're making some progress here. All right, I think I'm gonna have to. I think I'm gonna have to pull this upper panel here. You can't really see it too much because I've got the camera mounted. But up under the glove box and back to this cross panel, there's a uh, this cross brace. There's a a little fuzzy panel. So I, I think I'm gonna have to get that out of the way here. So let me let me. It just it's just held on. Um, let's see if I can pull the camera out here and kind of show you. I'm using the little Joby that I bought my girlfriend for her yoga video. Okay, so if you kind of look up under here, there's usually a couple couple screws. Uh, looks like they might be hex or torx. So there's one here, one uh, where are we here on the camera? One here, and uh, looks like there's one up under here. Might 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 be more. Um, and then it looks like there's a couple that attach to this cross brace. So I'm going to have to lose, lose this panel here, and then we'll be back. Okay, so I decided next on the agenda is to take this panel out. And you can see that's held in with these two 10 millimeter screws. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera, but that will allow us to take the trim piece that your foot uh, that closes the, the area here up off. So we'll do that right now. Okay, so remove those two 10 millimeter bolts and that allowed us to get the, the panel out, which I have in my lap here. I'll take this over here. So that's out of the way. And I uh, wanted to note something kind of interesting on this little angle bracket. If you recall the two uh, T25 Torx uh, bolts that I took out are right here, but they really don't do too much. Um, I guess they just hold this little triangle piece in so I may take that piece off and just utilize this bottom piece as my as my battery hold down. Uh, I'll have to see how things look but I thought that was kind of interesting to note. And then here's the two 10 millimeters which clamp this down. So on the 458 Italia, you, you, as I remember, you pretty much just have this and a little bracket that goes up. So um, anyways, I'm going to get back here to the, get back here to the, the car and see what we've got to, to do next. So uh, I think it's going to probably be pull that little panel off and it looks like it's got the T25 Torxes as well. So I'm going to go after that panel, see if I can remove that real quick. So we'll be right back here. Okay, yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of on my back here, but yeah. So the one in the corner, it's a machine screw. The one up here directly, you can see we're under the da under the glove box. The one directly in the middle forward. Let's see what we got here. Oh, it looks like it's also a machine screw. Okay, so it's the same as the other one. It was like a six uh, M6. And then what else we got here? I think I felt one up here. Yeah, so there's one up here. And I think that's yeah. That looks like that looks like it's about it. Here, let's see what we got. Uh, yeah, this looks like it just pops down. Okay, so then we got one more here. 
for number three. And then we got, looks like these two. So let me go ahead and pop those off and I'll pull this panel out of the way. Get a little better shot. Okay, so look at that. So the little guy right here, under the, you can see where we're at here. The little guy right under there was, was a smaller one. Looks like an M5. Still a T25 Torx, but it was a small M5. So in case anyone gets their screws all confused, that's where, where we're at. And then all we got left are these two two guys back here. So let's, let me grab those and pull them out and see what those are. Okay, we got the other two screws, which are have two large washers. They're still, uh, they're M5, but they're slightly longer than that little guy there that was at the end uh, over towards the center console. So I'm not sure why we don't just standardize on the screw sizes, but it, this does allow us to take this panel off so you can kind of see here. And then uh, it's kind of a similar affair to the 458 Italia, although it was aluminum on the 458. And it looks like we got a couple more screws. I'm gonna, okay, I'm going after this guy here. So you see on, on the left side, it was just a four millimeter uh, Allen head screw. On the right side, a little more tricky, but if you look up here, you, you can kind of see, you might be able to kind of see there a little bit. You can kind of pull this panel down around and kind of get it out of the way a little bit. And that, that gives you access to this far. I don't know if you can see that far screw back there. And then I'm using this little guy here, which is a low profile bit driver. I don't know where I got this thing, but you see what it says here. Uh, I'll see if I can find the link for that thing. This thing has saved my neck many times, especially on the, on the motorcycle, the R1. Uh, sometimes this would be the only thing that would allow me to get the bike back together So I'll see if I can dig up a link for that, but it's gonna help me out here getting this cross brace Okay, so we got the cross brace off and then on on the far right side for some unknown reason. It's a T25 so I don't know welcome to Ferrari. That's all I can say. So now you can see So now you can see uh, the battery's kind of moving free. There's this little uh, bracket with the copper pinch nut is over here and then I got to get out of the mix. But otherwise, uh, as soon as I pull this guy off, and this is like a fuse panel, something, or bridges, uh, electrical stuff. I'm not sure exactly what this is, but uh, it's got to get out of the way. And it looks like we're going to have to get back there on this little guy and pop this guy up so okay so the fun continues okay so had to remove this guy here first so push push down in the back and this will pop off this little guy will pop off and then I'm gonna looks like about a 10 millimeter back there so let me see if I can get that and loosen up the connector here on the negative side and then this here looks like about an eight millimeter which i'll get with a socket so we'll be back in a moment okay so this assembly here uh just required a 10 millimeter socket on a swivel and that opened up that uh, terminal bracket uh, terminal clamp which came off the negative side and that allows me to take this whole thing off so it looks like this whole thing is is here to give a a point for the harness and also to give you a little bit of a remote uh, disconnect for the, the battery so that's a lot of work for a little gain in my opinion but okay no problem now let me get the other side here and we should be able to get this battery out okay i stand corrected that was a 10 millimeter okay so that's loose but still can't get can't get the thing the battery out okay so here when you pop this little guy up you see all this stuff now this is where most ferrari owners say okay that's it count me out i've had enough turn back but not us we just go forward i think this is screwed down into the battery but we'll see what happens here in a minute okay so the little top cover came off and so that little red thing with the two screws i'm pretty sure that's the last uh thing keeping it so i got this little guy here we're gonna go go to town on this guy here and get get this little red thing out of the mix and see what that is okay sure enough took out those two screws this guy popped up and you know it's got like it's got some little it's a lot like what you use when you put up hang a picture up on sheetrock so 
the screws go in and expand that out and lock that in there. Now, I won't be using that again on my lithium ion battery, but that's too bad. Okay, so now this thing comes off and looks like the battery's all but free here. I probably should have taken my floor, floor mat out before I started all this, but... Okay, so the battery is effectively free. I'm going to yank it out here in a second and then uh, let's uh, see what this sucker weighs. Okay, that was it. Battery's out. And I'll tell you what, I'm glad I put two handles on this thing because this thing weighs a ton. So this is a genuine Ferrari battery. It's got, looks like it's got some little vent here. Next to it is the Braille lithium ion. So I'm gonna run upstairs, grab the bathroom scale and uh, let's see what kind of weight savings we're in for here. Okay, we're back. I got the bathroom scale. So let's see what let's see what we got here. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Okay, so first the, the braille battery. Let's see what that guy weighs. So he comes in at 18.2 pounds. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, 18.2. Alright, I'm almost afraid to see how much the Ferrari battery weighs, but let me see what we got here. Okay. So the Ferrari battery. Tips the scale, oh, that's not as bad as I thought. Tips the scale at 43.6 pounds. So, all right, so that's good to know. So we're gonna set the Ferrari battery aside here and get back to work over there on the 488. Okay, so I've I've lifted the braille battery in and slipped it in there if it's no problem. And let's just set this down on here. This seat this sets uh, seats down nicely. I haven't not tightened this yet, but looks like it'll sit nicely there. We've got the little negative harness here. The remote, oh, this is the little cutoff thingy. So then we're gonna have to add this piece on top here, thread the cable down around here. And I have to see about the bracket situation. I think I'm going to have to go for those little side pieces there. So, um, okay. So let me, let me do a little test fitting and then I'll see if I can get all this on camera for you. Okay. So as you can see, the battery's back in, had to go with the Ferrari kind of the two rods on either side. Uh, that one just left it uh, at the set at the, the bolt where it was the copper bolt. Uh, nut rather and then just drape this across hook this little hook on this side and then uh, cinch this down so that we've got even tension I, I have to say I'm not I kind of like the 458 Italia method of holding the battery in far better this reminds me a little too much of like a Toyota pickup truck but you know who am I to question fry so and I guess we got we got to get this little front bracket in but looks like the battery's battery is in there very securely so that's good i'm going to tighten this down put the little uh top piece on and then get to work on the negative side over here get all the brackets back into place and then uh i think we should be good to go so let me get let me get busy with that and oh and i got to put this cross piece and the trim panels on and then that should just about that should just about cover it so we're making some progress here Okay, we're in the home stretch now. So just a couple words of advice if you do this job yourself. Put this black cover on while this is off. Once it's seated, then put it on the positive terminal. Over here, be careful when you thread, when you put this thing back on here, the, the harness that goes over here. Be careful because the end of that little mounting uh, rod with the copper bolt sticks up. So you gotta kind of thread it around here carefully. And then uh, we just got to put the, the front bracket in place and then connect up our battery, put in the trim, and should be good to go. So let me get on that here and we'll wrap this video up. Okay, we're making some progress. So we've got to put the flat back on here before we put the other bracket on because it blocks these little bolts, 10 millimeter bolts here. And you got to get this cross brace lined up such that you, when you close it, the little hole lines up there. At least you know some something close by so you can kind of pinch it into into shape um 
and I, I reconnected this and I'm about to tighten this guy down here. My girlfriend just came out and informed me that she likes the 488 more than the 458, which I think is blasphemous, but what, what, what can I say? I, I really love the 458 Italia. Although, I, I have to say the 488 is growing on me, especially more than I work on it. Um, okay, so uh, almost got everything back together here. Going to put the rest of the uh, brackets and everything in and then we'll uh, tighten everything down and put that upper panel back on and we should be just about done. Okay, so all I've done is prior to putting this bracket in, I reinstalled these two guys, which don't just kind of clamp that down. And then I just uh, put this in. This goes appears to go on top of it. Uh, make sure you have the negative connection behind this little tab here because it's got to thread over and go on here. So, and then there's just four 10 millimeters. Uh, that hold this bracket in place. I'm going to thread those in and, and uh, go ahead and tighten those down. So, Okay, one thing I wanted to mention here just in case people are doing this job. Okay, this screw which holds this guy, this, this bolt here, 10 millimeter, and the one in under here, you need, to, you need to tighten those down first before you get this guy in the mix because this is not holding your battery and this is holding this little terminal right here. But what's really holding the front of the batteries is so those two on the outside and one of them is covered by this so you got to be careful you don't lose track of that guy make sure those are clamped down first before you head over to do the terminal there okay so nearly done here so after getting this guy secured down then these two 10 millimeter bolts hold this kind of little remote terminal thing here and I've got the cross brace up here secured so now all that's left aside from the, the under panel is to hook this little guy back up so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do the under panel first and then we'll put this guy back on and uh, that'll supply power to the car there okay so I'm just putting this upper panel back on I think I most I, mi I think I misspoke before uh, this on my car, there's a six millimeter Allen head. Same over here in the corner. This one is a five, uh, this little guy here in the, towards the center console is a five millimeter Torx, as are these two little guys that hold the back of the panel. So I just wanted to add a little clarification there. Anyways, I'm gonna tighten, oops, tighten these little guys up here, get this panel fitted nicely again. And then we'll be pretty much all done. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. And then we'll reconnect the power to the car. Okay, well, got the trim panel back on here. I will mention, if you go to put this screw in and it's suddenly too long, then most likely what you've done is you've confused it with one of these two. Uh, this screw is about 3 millimeters shorter than the rest. So you got to be careful there. Um, so that's about it. Next uh, on the list here is to thread this little guy back on and reconnect it. Uh, I like to make sure I do that with both hands. I don't want to get any sparks going here. Um, try to be as gentle on the electronics of the car as possible. I want to reconnect this. And um, also, if you do happen to do this, I highly suggest you review the battery reconnection procedure. Okay, and just a quick note before we wrap things up, uh, came into my office here. Um, if you're not familiar with Ferraris, uh, when you reconnect the battery, you, you have to kind of uh, go through a few procedures to get the car back in order. Um, you open and close the doors, the luggage compartment, right, and raise the windows, set the clock. And then the most important thing is before you start, you got to give it this kind of 60 seconds for the valves and uh, motor driven valves and, and the ECU to kind of get uh, synced up with the car. And then after that, you're good to go. So that's, I just want to interject that before we're done here, that if you've never reconnected the battery on the Ferrari, uh, make sure that you refer to page 225 in the owner's manual uh, when it comes to reconnecting the battery. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up but uh, as soon as we reconnect that main uh, ground over there on the terminal to the left then this job will be done okay well we're all done with the battery install 
and I have completed the reconnection process where you open the front hood and you uh, operate the windows up and down and you do the door locks and everything. So let's go ahead and fire things up here just uh, momentarily. And on the on the 488, uh, they no longer have a key as they did over here with the 458 Italia, which I, I kind of miss, frankly, but uh, the way it works now is you just have kind of an on-off button. So if you just push it once, the car fires up. We can uh, we can check the status of the battery. So control switch over here. Uh, push the little arrow buttons. Um, so you can see the car is cold, and then we can see the oil pressure and specifically the battery voltage. Uh, because it's a lithium ion battery, I, it re reads a little different than the stock battery due to the configuration of the cells, I believe. So I don't pay too much attention to the actual reading on the uh, car itself. Um, if I remember correctly, it's it reads a little bit higher when you're driving the car. But And then, of course, you've got the tire pressure, which is real handy. Um, the display isn't quite as easy to read as on the 458 Italia, but it still gets the job done. So let's go ahead and uh, fire up the car real quick, foot on the brake, press the engine start button again. So that's a wrap on the Braille battery installation to the 488 GTB. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'd probably say 10 being the hardest, I'd say it's probably a 2 or 3 sort of job. Uh, as long as you're comfortable and have some tools, don't have any problems uh, dealing with electrical stuff, then uh, it's certainly a job you can do yourself. If you're not comfortable, then maybe a job uh, better left to the dealer. Um, on the 458 Italia, it was a very simple job, probably a one or a two. This is a two or a three. But I will say that having the lithium ion battery, uh, even though it's, you know, whatever, I think it was 2800 bucks or 3000 or whatever the, the whole thing cost, I got to say it's hard to put a price on not having to use the battery tender. And that's especially true in situations where you travel overnight or for the weekend to a hotel or what have you, and the car's parked. Um, and you don't have access to an electrical outlet, maybe uh, a couple days hanging out by the pool, you don't drive the car, and uh, with the lithium-ion battery, um, it's, it's really nice to know that the thing's going to fire right up and you're not going to have any, any issues from the car sitting. So, like I say, battery is expensive, saves you about 25 pounds, but really the true peace of mind is that um, you don't have to use the battery charger and you're uh, very confident that the car is always going to start. So, Okay, well, thanks as always for watching. I appreciate all the subscribers on my channel. If you haven't already done so, click like and subscribe. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to use the section below. Thanks very much for watching.